Good evening and welcome into St. Joseph High School here in Westchester, Illinois, where tonight it's a makeup of a Chicago Catholic League blue game between the Loyola Academy Ramblers and the St. Joseph Chargers. Hello everybody, I'm Connor Klingen and thank you for joining me tonight on Spreaker.com, powered by Arena Sportsnet. We apologize for the technical difficulties tonight. Unfortunately, the website will not be up and running due to a hacking issue that occurred earlier this week. But we will have this game streamed live here on Spreaker.com. That is Spreaker.com slash user slash Arena Sportsnet. So thank you for hanging in there with us tonight. The sophomore game is still going here from St. Joe's. And right now Loyola has a one-point lead, 40-39 to in overtime. With 11 seconds to play here in the overtime period, Loyola has the ball just after St. Joe's scored, so it should be an exciting finish here with the one-point lead for Loyola. And they will inbound from underneath their own basket. So a little bit of bonus basketball for you, the end of the sophomore game here in overtime from St. Joseph High School. Loyola will inbound here. With Maddie Mangan. They go for the long pass ahead to Mangan. He's open in the front court. He lays it up and in. It gives Loyola a three point lead. Now down to five seconds left. The Chargers need to hit this one. They can't get it to go at the buzzer. And Loyola takes the sophomore game 42 to 39 in overtime an absolute thriller on the sophomore side but the ramblers come away with the victory and that will lead us in to tonight's varsity action of course we will have a 20 minute period of warm up for these two teams before tonight's crucial CCL blue game this Loyola team with just one loss in Chicago Catholic League play on the season. And if they're able to come away with the road victory tonight, they'll have a chance to clinch a regular season conference title on the road at Fenwick on Friday night. So that will be the big battle in the Chicago Catholic League this weekend. But the Chargers are looking to play spoiler to those plans for Loyola and St. Joe's is on a three-game winning streak themselves. So they'll definitely have a chance to do that, playing their best basketball of the season right now. And that's what Coach Pingator said. He wants his team to be playing better basketball near the end of the season as the playoffs approach. And the Chargers are doing just that right now. And I was lucky to be joined, as always, before tonight's game by the St. Joseph Chargers head coach, Gene Pingator, who now has 1,016 career victories, the all-time leader in boys' high school basketball in the state of Illinois, one of just 15 coaches in the entire country with over 1,000 victories. We talked about the team's current three-game win streak, how a long layoff could affect this team. Now, it's been a while since the Chargers have played due to the snow out last weekend. They were only supposed to play on Friday night, this game against Loyola last Friday. It was canceled due to the over 10 inches of snow that fell on the ground on that Friday morning and throughout the day as well. And in a long trip from for Loyola from Wilmette down here to Westchester. So that game was canceled as was pretty much every single game in the Chicagoland area due to the weather this past weekend. So can the Chargers come off of that layup, layoff? And also, we talked a little bit about the challenge presented tonight by the Loyola Academy Ramblers. So here he is, as always, before every game here on Arena Sportsnet, St. Joseph Chargers head coach, Gene Pingator. We're here with St. Joseph Chargers head coach Gene Pingator before tonight's crucial game against Loyola Academy. They're coming in at 21-4, but coach, on your end, a three-game winning streak. Do you feel like in some ways that Brother Rice game was a bit of a wake-up call for your team? I'm not sure if it was the Rice game, but uh, they have played well since. So uh, I hope, hopefully we'll carry it over. It's a crucial game. For them more than us because they're tied for, no, they're in second place with one loss and uh, they played Fenwick on Friday. So uh, it is a crucial game. 
Well, in that three-game winning streak, you guys have been playing great on the defensive side of the ball. You've held the last three opponents under 50 points. What's been the difference lately on the defensive end of the floor? I'm not sure uh, the defense has been pretty consistent, but I think we've controlled our offense more. As a, as a result, uh, we're taking less shots, fewer shots, and uh, uh, with higher percentage, and they might carry over. In fact, that, uh, that, that's cutting down on the number of shots the other team is taking, too. Well, Coach, she told me at the beginning of the season you don't want to play your best basketball at the beginning of the year. Do you feel like this team is starting to round into that form and starting to reach that potential that you feel like they have? I'll let you know after the game tonight. <laughs> we only have three more after tonight, so uh, and, and then we'll go right into the regional play. Well, and of course, the IHSA seeding comes out on Friday, so... You did say this game's important for Loyola, but a win over them would probably be your most impressive victory of the season. Probably so. The seeding is uh, going to be done after noon tomorrow. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure how much of a factor this will be. We we have to turn the score in, and I'm not sure we'll get it in in time. So uh, I, I, I just like the idea that our kids are, are playing pretty well at this time of year. They certainly are, and one player who's been playing very well for you guys, Jalen Boyd, a couple of weekends ago, had 38 points in the two games of, of that weekend. What has he been doing offensively so well recently? Shot selection. Taking better shots, and as a result, uh, he's able to score more. He's got that great spot on the baseline. That's really his right, go-to right. jumper right there. Well, Coach, you guys have had... Obviously, you've had practice, but quite a bit a bit of a layoff game-wise. And on a three-game winning streak, is that something where you feel like it could hurt your momentum at all? No, not really. I, I, I think uh, the fact that, that we practice after, uh, you know, the, the snow out on Friday, and, and uh, I think we're prepared to play. No, the kids know what they have to do. They know what time of the year it is, and, and they also know that they've been successful. So I expect them to do a good job tonight. Loyola is a team that plays sort of similar to DePaul. They long offensive possessions. How can your team kind of speed up this game and shorten those possessions for the Ramblers? Well, one way is to go get them. So at what point in the game are we going to go get them? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. And uh, one thing that was successful against DePaul in that game and, and getting them away from having those long offensive possessions was the press. Don't want to give anything away, obviously, but could we see that tonight from you guys? Well, that's one way to speed up the game, obviously. They don't want to do that. They don't, they want to take their time. So a lot depends. I, I'm a coach that coaches by feel. I don't have a, you know, a set mechanical set of uh, things to do. like. I coach by feel. When I have a feeling that we need to go get them, we're going to go get them. We'll see if that happens tonight. And Coach, one last question. They've got a couple of guys at 6'7". How, how important is that battle on the glass tonight? Well, Jordan will have his hands full, but the other guys do. All of us have to rebound. Yeah, I mean, they're a good team. Uh, Jordan is uh, a strong kid. He's experienced. I'm expecting Jordan to do a good job tonight. Well, coach, thank you for your time and good luck tonight. Thank you. Thanks to St. Joseph Chargers head coach Gene Pingator for joining us tonight as he does before every game here on arenasportsnet.com. Again, we apologize for the technical difficulties tonight. The website has been hacked. It is currently down. So we are airing live on Spreaker.com. You can find us at Spreaker.com slash user slash Arena Sports Net. And we'd like to thank Spreaker for helping us stream the game's all season long. Of course, usually we embed the link onto Arena Sports Net, but tonight that will not be the case due to the technical difficulties. But we're still bringing the game to you tonight live from St. Joseph. This is a game, again, that is being made up from last Friday night. It was supposed to be played, but then the snowstorm hit. School was canceled all over Chicagoland, and so were the basketball games planned for that night so these teams getting in a midweek game a bit of a rarity for St. Joseph coach Pingator someone who definitely well pretty much every coach prefers to play weekend games Friday and Saturday night 
when compared to those midweek games in, in some sense uh, it can be a little bit more difficult to play in the middle of the week tough to have the same level of energy that you have on a weekend when you're in the, a grind especially on a Tuesday it seems like almost everybody out there Tuesday can be a tough day to get through and uh, when you're going through an eight-hour school day and then you have to come out and play a basketball game at night, that can definitely be tough, and that's a reason why Coach Pingator, along with most other coaches, would prefer to play those Friday and Saturday night games. And this was scheduled to be last Friday night, but here we are on Tuesday. Well, at this time, we'd like to remind you that tonight's game is brought to you by the St. Joseph Basketball Alumni Association. Of course, like to thank the president of the St. Joseph Basketball Alumni Association, Mark Sassetti, for bringing you this basketball all season. He is really the man who set this all in motion this season to set up arenasportsnet.com and St. Joseph Chargers basketball. So thanks to Mark and all of the St. Joseph Basketball Alumni Association. And you can help support St. Joseph High School by donating to the Annette Pingator Fund. Named for Coach Jean Pingator's mother, Annette Pingator. The Annette Pingator Fund provides aid to numerous St. Joseph students. And in order to find out more information, you can contact Cal- Kathy Taylor and you can reach her at 708 562 7488 or at Kate Taylor at St. Joe HS.org by email. Again, that's Kathy Taylor at 708-562-7488 or Taylor at stjohs.org. We'd also like to remind you that the St. Joseph High School Casino Night will be held April 21st right here at St. Joseph High School. For more information about the event, you can also contact Kathy Taylor. Again, that's 708-562-7488 or Taylor at stjohs.org. Certainly a great event every year here at St. Joseph High School, the casino night that will be held here at the school. Now back to tonight's game between two formidable CCL teams, consistently two of the better programs in this conference. Of of course, you look at the history of St. Joe's throughout the years, one of the best programs in the state of Illinois, going all the way back to the 60s and 70s since Coach Pingator has been here. It is his 49th season. Of course, the prestige of having a couple of NBA players with Isaiah Thomas and also currently Evan Turner and also Daryl Thomas. So many great players coming through here at St. Joseph's. Dimitri McKamey, Jonathan Peoples, Nick Rakusevic, Glenn Watson and Jordan Ash, always tremendous players here at St. Joe's. But Loyola started to come out of the basketball scene a little bit more recently here in the Chicagoland area. And you may remember that somebody's sons played for Loyola Academy. That would be Michael Jordan. His sons Jeffrey and Marcus Jordan both played at one time or another for Loyola Academy and MJ was a staple at Loyola Games back in the day. Of course, Marcus ended up transferring to Whitney Young later on in his career, but Jeffrey is a graduate of Loyola Academy. So that sort of brought Loyola into prominence on the basketball scene in this state of Illinois, and really since then, they have been a tremendous basketball program. Now, of course, they had history before the Jordan boys arrived there, but really the most notable players in in that history for Loyola but since then consistently a very good program and this season no exception already sitting at 21 and 4 with just one loss in conference play now the Chargers come into this ball game riding a three game winning streak but it's a winning streak that stretches pretty far back it started over two weeks ago with a road victory over Batavia on January 27th the finale of the night of hoops really a game that the chargers dominated uh, especially in that second half and did very well on the defensive side of the ball it was a 52 to 40 win but a 12 point win that really didn't seem that, that close the chargers led by over 20 points in the third quarter but still a, an impressive victory over a batavia team that at one point was ranked in the top 20 in the area the next friday night they came back home easily dispatched Mount Carmel 
and then on the following night, went on the road to St. Charles North. Always a tough program. Both of those St. Charles schools, the Chargers have defeated this season. Both usually two of the better teams in the far western suburbs, and the Chargers picked up a quality road win there at St. Charles North. So it is a three-game winning streak, but the Chargers have not played since February 3rd. Now one of the key players in that win streak is Jalen Boyd. And in the last weekend that the Chargers played two games, he had 38 points in those two, as I mentioned earlier in the interview with Coach Pingator. And as he said, Jalen's shot selection has been outstanding. He has that go-to spot on the baseline, the short jumper, not stretching his range out too far. But if he can get that shot in close, you know, those shots from within 10 feet, that's what he likes, and if he is open, he absolutely should take that short jumper, and he has been nailing it, and most of the time really swishing it. So he's been tremendous lately, averaging 19 points per game in those two games against Mount Carmel and St. Charles North. Had the 20-point game against St. Charles North. Now the defense has been strong for St. Joe's all season, but especially during this three-game win streak, In the last three games, Charger opponents are averaging just 43 points per game. So as I talked about with Coach Pingator, while the defense has been the strength of this team throughout the season, it has really taken it up a notch in these last three games. Just 43 points per game for opponents. And this is a game tonight that you can also expect to be somewhat low scoring because we're going to talk a little bit here about Loyola and they're a team that also plays extremely well on the defensive end and also on the offensive end try to slow the game down a bit as I mentioned to coach Pingator they play a similar style to DePaul Prep where they're very patient offensively they have no issue taking over a minute per offensive possession They'll be happy playing at a slow pace in the half court. Meanwhile, the Chargers are going to try to speed this game up up a bit, try to get it going up-tempo, get some fast-break opportunities, force some turnovers, transition buckets the other way. The question is, can St. Joe's do that? Can they force those turnovers in the half court that lead to opportunities the other way for the Chargers? So the Ramblers come in with a record of 21-4. and four. They're ranked 19th in Michael O'Brien's Super 25 in the Chicago Sun-Times. Only one loss in Chicago Catholic League play, and that was at the hands of St. Rita. Now, they did lose to DePaul Prep as well, but that was considered a non-conference game because it was during a Martin Luther King Day tournament. Loyola actually has split the season series with DePaul Prep, picking up a win just a few days before their loss to DePaul Prep. And as I said, like the Chargers, Loyola is a team that prides itself on the defensive end of the floor. They're allowing an astoundingly low 30 points per game in their last three contests. That number is helped by a massive outlier, though, as St. Pat scored a measly 11 points against the Ramblers just a few weeks ago. Something that you don't see very often in a high school game, allowing just 11 points over four quarters. Folks, that is 32 minutes of basketball. St. Patrick scored only 11 against Loyola. So that tells you something about this Loyola team that they can hold a team like St. Pat's, a really proud program there at St. Pat's, scored just 11 points against this team and pretty much against everybody else. It's difficult to score against this Loyola team. Pretty often they've held teams under 40 points and a couple of times they've held opponents under 30 points. Really the most impressive being the occasion where they held St. Pat's to just 11. Now certainly those low scoring numbers are helped by that slow offensive pace that Loyola uses, but you still have to give credit where credit is due. The defensive intensity shown by Loyola, 
is clear from the statistics all season long. But despite not being a high-scoring team, still plenty of talent on this Rambler squad. Kevin Cunningham leads the charge, averaging over 14 points per game. And as I mentioned earlier in the interview with Coach Pingator, the Ramblers also have some size. Jordan and Bennett Kwasinski, the twin sophomores, both stand in at six foot seven, and they will provide a challenge in the post for Jordan and Jalen Boyd. It's not too often that you see two sets of twin brothers out there on the floor going up against each other, especially two really good sets of twin brothers and two sets of twin brothers that also have some size out there. So that'll be a matchup to watch tonight between the twins for both teams and for both teams, both twins are in the starting lineup. Definitely a rarity out there in high school basketball. And while Jalen Boyd has been the Chargers' main option on the offensive end lately, the Chargers would certainly like to see the level of production they got earlier in the season from Jafari Brown and Ahmad Muhammad. They would like to see those two get back to where they were in the early part of the season. Obviously, they love seeing Jalen Boyd score as he did a couple of weeks ago, averaged 19 points the last full weekend that the Chargers played, but... To really have this offense humming on all cylinders, they need Jafari Brown and Ahmad Muhammad to be at their best and also Chance Aldridge, of course. And again, at this time, we'd like to remind you tonight's game is brought to you by the St. Joseph Basketball Alumni Association. And at this time, we can go to public address announcer Jay Meath, who will lead us in the opening prayer as well as the playing of the Star Spangled Banner to be followed by tonight's starting lineups here from St. Joseph High School. So once again, we will give it up to the public address announcer and head baseball coach for St. Joseph High School, Jay Meath.
So there you have the starting lineups for Loyola. It'll be Kevin Cunningham, Jordan Kwasinski, Bennett Kwasinski, and Pete Mangan, along with Connor Barrett, rounding out that starting lineup for the Ramblers. For St. Joe's, it'll be the same starting lineup as usual. The five seniors, Chance Aldridge at the point, Ahmad Muhammad, the shooting guard, along with Jafari Brown, Jordan and Jalen Boyd, the twin brothers in the front court for St. Joe's. Jafari Brown, as I mentioned, a player that led this team in scoring early in the season, but he's been somewhat quiet lately. The question is, can he get going tonight in a game that the Chargers are going to need him to get going against a formidable Loyola team, coming in with a 21-4 record. But they're a squad that likes to slow down the basketball game, and they will try to have those possessions last over a minute. Again, no shot clock in high school basketball here in the state of Illinois, and Loyola certainly uses that to their advantage. So here it is, the opening tip. It'll be Jordan Boyd going up against Kwasinski. It'll be Bennett Kwasinski taking the tip for Loyola. His brother Jordan's also on the floor, both at six foot seven. the twin brothers, and they are sophomores. And Jordan Boyd wins the tip back to Chance Aldridge. So St. Joe's will start with possession. Ahmad Muhammad on the right wing. Back top of the key for Jalen Boyd. Dishes off Jafari Brown right wing. Now Jordan Boyd back up top of the key. Aldridge on the right wing. Bounce pass for Jordan Boyd. Now underneath. And a travel called on Jordan Boyd. So an early turnover for the Chargers. And Loyola will have the basketball. Aldridge applying some pressure in the backcourt. But Loyola able to break past it. Here's Barrett. And underneath quickly to Bennett Kwasinski. Or rather, no, that was a three-point bucket by Barrett. Three to nothing. Loyola here early. 7-10 to play in the first quarter. Loyola with the three to nothing lead. Jafari Brown dribbles now, dishes out. Jalen Boyd left wing. Boyd. Now for Muhammad. It's Jordan Boyd on the right wing now. Jordan Boyd underneath to his brother Jalen. Back out Jordan Boyd. Long two-point jumper. That's long. Offensive rebound put up by Jalen Boyd. Partially blocked and Loyola with the rebound. Running with it the other way. Kevin Cunningham, the point guard, with it for the Ramblers. Now dishes to Kwasinski. Now it's Bennett Kwasinski, hands off for Barrett, who hit that three. He launches again. This one's off the mark. Rebound to Ahmad Muhammad. Muhammad looking to push for the Chargers. Off for Jafari Brown. Thought about the three, decided against it. Now dishes for Ahmad Muhammad. His three rattles out. Offensive rebound by the Chargers. They reset things with Chance Aldridge on the left wing. Now it's Jafari Brown to Jordan Boyd, top of the key. 3 nothing Loyola. Chargers looking for their first basket. Here's Ahmad Muhammad underneath with the land on the left side off glass and in. 3-2 to two the score now. Loyola with the basketball. Cunningham will push it over the midcourt stripe for the Ramblers. Now Cunningham on the left wing to Bennett Kwasinski. Kwasinski looking for Cunningham on the baseline off glass. That's hard off the glass and the rebound to the Chargers. Muhammad looking to push for St. Joe's and he has it back in the left wing where the offense will reset things. Now it's Chance Aldridge between the circles. Over to Jordan Boyd, right wing. Underneath pass for Muhammad, and Muhammad will dribble back out beyond the three-point arc. 5.30 to play, 3-2 to two Loyola. St. Joe's with the basketball. Chance Aldridge, left wing, three. It's long, rebound to Loyola. Cunningham will push it over half court, and not ready for the pass was his teammate Jordan Kwasinski, as he couldn't quite find it. <laughs> And then a bit of a funny moment there as Jafari Brown was <laughs> hit in the face by a pass from a cheerleader. Uh, she was trying to just pass the ball back to the official, but it actually hit Jafari Brown. Thankfully, it wasn't thrown too hard, and Jafari can just laugh that off. 5-10 to play, 3-2 to two Loyola. Chance Aldridge has it. Now it's Jordan Boyd left wing. To his brother Jalen, fall away jumper, it's there. 
Well, I said it in the pregame, Jalen Boyd has been the catalyst on offense for St. Joe's lately, and he's off to a good start again here tonight. Four to three Chargers with just under five minutes to play here in the first quarter. Here's John Lynch. Lynch came off the bench. Now it's Barrett who hit that three early in the ballgame, the only basket for the Ramblers. Cunningham, the point guard now to Bennett Kwasinski. Kwasinski guarded by Jordan Boyd. He hands off for Mangan. Lynch again. Back for Bennett Kwasinski. Kwasinski, the handoff for Mangan. Now they look for Lynch on the left wing. Cross-court pass for Barrett on the right wing. Barrett decides against the shot. Loyola taking their time offensively. Barrett at the top of the key looking for a pass down low. It's stolen away by the Chargers. A clear foul there by Bennett Kwasinski as he was all over Jalen Boyd trying to grab that ball back. Boyd had already stolen it, and then Kwasinski reached over his back and is called for the foul. Now coming on for the Ramblers is Patrick Russell. They already have John Lynch who came in off the bench. Jafari Brown on the left wing. Chargers lead it 4-3. 4-10 to play first quarter. Jordan Boyd to Chance Aldridge in the left corner. Aldridge trying to drive baseline and is called for a charge. Aldridge was trying to dish off the pass there. But Loyola was able to draw the charge, so that's the first foul on St. Joe's, and it goes on Chance Aldridge. And Aldridge applying a one-man press here in the backcourt, guarding Kevin Cunningham on the inbounds. Ramblers able to get it into Cunningham, bringing it up the left side of the floor. Now he goes for Russell. Russell at the top of the key. Now pass back Cunningham, left wing three, off the mark. Rebound tipped around, and Malik Anderson has it as Anderson came in off the bench for the Chargers. Anderson on the left wing. Now top of the key, Jafari Brown between the circles. Right wing Chance Aldridge looking for an entry pass, decides against it. Now he'll bring it into Jordan Boyd. Cross court, Malik Anderson, left wing three. It's long, offensive rebound, Jordan Boyd. Tries to put it back up, and he is fouled. He'll go to line with 3.30 left here in the first quarter. 4-3 to three the score, St. Joe's. As I said in the pregame, we expect a low-scoring basketball game, and we're getting just that so far. First free throw from Jordan Boyd. Nothing but that. So Jordan Boyd has his first point of the basketball game. 5-3 lead for St. Joe's. With 3.30 to play, the second free throw. Can't get this one to go. And the rebound to the point guard, Cunningham, for Loyola. Cunningham will dish it ahead for Mangan. Now it's Lynch on the right wing. Mangan between the circles now. Mangan trying to drive to the basket, and he gets all the way there for an easy two. We're tied up at 5. 3.10 to play first quarter. Jafari Brown brings it over half court for the Chargers. Brown between the circles, guarded by Mangan. Now it's Malik Anderson, right wing. Aldridge at the top of the key. Dribbles out between the circles, trying to find Jordan Boyd. A lot of contact there, nothing called, and Loyola has it back the other way. And now an official takes a spill on the sideline, but Loyola still running with it. They take a three, can't hit. The official still having trouble getting up, and now he's finally back to his feet. And St. Joe's has the basketball. 2.40 to play after a very interesting sequence. And here is Anderson trying to put up a shot, or rather Jalen Boyd couldn't get it to go. But then a putback attempt by Jafari Brown. He was fouled. He'll go to line for two. Not something you see very often. An official taking a tumble near the sideline, and he had some uh, trouble getting up to his feet, so hopefully he's all right as Jafari Brown sinks the first free throw. Now, while that was going on, Connor Barrett missed a three. He made his first one, but he's missed the last couple. He's been the go-to threat from the outside for Loyola thus far. Second free throw attempt from Jafari Brown. And the officials making sure to tell Loyola not to encroach into the lane before that free throw. Here is the second free throw from Jafari Brown, and he nails it. 7-5 Chargers with 2.30 to play here in the first quarter. As now Quinn Pemberton brings it up the floor for Loyola. Pemberton in the right corner, guarded by Jalen Boyd. 
Pemberton dribbles around to the top of the key. Now for Mangan on the left wing. Back for Cunningham on the right wing. Cunningham bothered by Ahmad Muhammad. Muhammad playing tight defense, as are all the Chargers. Two minutes to play here in the first quarter. 7-5 lead for St. Joe's. Here's Cunningham at the top of the key facing a double team. Now it's Mangan in the right corner. Now they dish baseline looking back for Mangan. And a jump ball as Jafari Brown got a hand on the basketball. The possession arrow is pointing the way of Loyola. And the Ramblers head coach, Tom Libertino, not happy at all with that call. He thought it was a foul. But it looked to me like Jafari Brown had his hands straight up there. So a nice call there for the Chargers on the tie-up. Now spinning his way to the basket is John Lynch. Can't get it to go. Rebound of Malik Anderson. 1.45 to play in the first. Chargers with two-point lead. Anderson at the top of the key. Now to Jalen Boyd, right wing. Passes tipped and stolen by Mangan. Mangan for Cunningham. Cunningham dribbles behind his back in the backcourt and is just able to hold on to the ball. 1.30 to play. Loyola trailing by two. 7-5 lead here for St. Joe's. Cunningham in the right corner, guarded by Muhammad. Now it's to Bennett Kwasinski. Kwasinski on the handoff for Lynch. Now Cunningham thought about the three, decided against it. Kwasinski in the mid lane. Now they go to Pemberton in the left corner. Mangan on the left wing. Mangan trying to drive to the basket on the right side, and he is fouled. Pete Mangan, somebody that really does everything for this Loyola team. Averages eight points per game, seven rebounds, and five assists. The captain for the Ramblers. A senior. So Mangan will have two free throws here. First free throw from Mangan. Can't get it to go. Mangan, a player out there on the floor that you you can just sense from watching him for a couple minutes. He really gives every ounce of effort out there as he hits the second free throw. As I said, really a Mr. Do everything for this Loyola team. Just over a minute to play in the first quarter. St. Joe's leads it 7 to 6 over Loyola. Ahmad Muhammad on the left wing. Muhammad dribbles around to the top of the key. Muhammad to Jordan Boyd left wing. Entry pass to his brother Jalen. Now back out Jordan. Now it's Malik Anderson right wing 3. He got it. Nothing but net there from Malik Anderson. And it's a 10-6 lead for the Chargers with 40 seconds to play in the first. Pemberton in the right corner for Bennett Kwasinski. Kwasinski hands back for Mangan with 35 seconds in the first. Wouldn't be surprised if Loyola held for the last shot of the quarter here. A team that is already patient offensively and trailing by four and now 25 seconds left on the clock as the point guard Cunningham dribbles around near the midcourt circle. Cunningham now to Mangan in the right corner. Back for Cunningham with 15 now. Clock dwindling down the final seconds of this first quarter. Now 10 seconds. Cunningham will take a long three. It's short. Offensive rebound. Cunningham with another three. That one doesn't go either. Rebound tipped out. Barrett takes a three at the horn. Can't get it to go. And so at the end of one, St. Joe's leads it 10-6. to six. After one quarter of play, And the Chargers in that quarter, Malik Anderson made a three-pointer for St. Joe's. Also, Ahmad Muhammad, Jafari Brown, and Jalen Boyd all had two. Jordan Boyd had one. For Loyola, Connor Barrett had three, and Pete Mangan also had three. We're going to take a quick break here in Arena Sports Net. We'll be back with the second quarter. Welcome back here to Arena Sportsnet, and thank you for listening to us tonight here on Spreaker. Of course, there is an issue with the website tonight on arenasportsnet.com, so you cannot listen directly on the site, but thank you for sticking with us and listening live here on Spreaker.com. An exciting first quarter, but as expected, low scoring. St. Joe's leading it 10-6 to after one on pace right now for a 40-point game which is about what we can expect when these two teams get together. Both pride themselves on defense. 
Muhammad with it on the left wing. Now Jalen Boyd on the left side. Top of the key, Jordan Boyd. Back for Ahmad Muhammad. Muhammad drives right side. Baseline jumper. He got it. 12-6, Chargers. 7.40 to play, second quarter. Cunningham to Bennett Kwasinski. One of the two twin brothers on this team. As now it's Connor Barrett. Barrett for Mangan, dribbling around between the circles. Now it's stolen by Chance Aldridge. Aldridge all the way to the hoop with the left hand for an easy two, and it's 14-6, Chargers. Eight-point lead for St. Joe's, the largest of the ball game. Here's Mangan between the circles. Mangan for Kwasinski. Mangan now on the left wing, spins his way back beyond the arc. Cunningham on the left wing, the point guard for the Ramblers. And now it's Barrett. And a timeout called by Loyola as St. Joe's leads it 14-6 early here in Westchester. 6.57 to play in the second quarter and a great start for St. Joe's as Chance Aldridge with a heads-up play on that steal, getting the transition to. And in the interview with Coach Pingator, that's what he was saying, exactly what this Chargers team needs to do. Create some turnovers, lead to some easy buckets the other way, and limit the time being taken off the clock on each possession by the Ramblers, a team that likes to be very patient with the basketball, really milk that clock down. Chargers not allowing them to do that here in the second quarter. So coming out of the timeout here, taken by Tom Libertino. Loyola. Has just six points thus far. Three from Barrett and three from Mangan. They've looked to Barrett quite a bit beyond the arc as well as Cunningham. For a team that doesn't score too much, they do like to shoot the three. That's where a lot of their offense does come from. The reason for the low scoring, of course, being that they hold the basketball for long stretches of time. Here's Kwasinski. Kwasinski hands off for Mangan. Mangan... Looking for a pass for Barrett. Now it's Mangan in the right corner. Bennett Kwasinski on the right wing. Kwasinski trying to drive on Jordan Boyd. It's poked away by Boyd. Up ahead for Aldridge. Aldridge the point guard setting up the offense for St. Joe's. Jalen Boyd fakes the three on the right wing. Now goes to his brother Jordan. Now Jafari Brown fakes the left wing three. Resets the offense with Muhammad. Muhammad drives the lane. Dishes Jordan. Jalen Boyd baseline jumper. He got it. Chargers with a 16-6 lead. And it's a 6-0 run to start this second quarter for St. Joe's. Just over six minutes to play here in the second quarter. A 10-point lead for the Chargers as Barrett drives all the way to the hoop. Impressively off the glass and got it to go. 16-8 the score now. Jordan Boyd and finally ending a run there for the Chargers. That stretched into the first quarter. Ahmad Muhammad now. Off to Jordan Boyd, who fell to the floor, and it's stolen away by Loyola. Cunningham with the basketball now, looking for a pass. He'll reset the offense. 5.30 to play, 16-8 to eight Chargers here in the second quarter. Here's Jordan Kwasinski. Kwasinski for Mangan. Mangan on the right side, off the glass, can't get the roll. Offensive rebound by Bennett Kwasinski. And the handoff back to Jordan Kwasinski to reset this offense for the Ramblers. Now a three from Cunningham, and he is fouled. They call the foul on Chance Aldridge. Aldridge did not like the call. He thought he got all ball there. So it's going to be three free throws for Kevin Cunningham. Cunningham, the leading scorer for this Loyola team, averaging over 14 points per game. His first free throw is on the money. That's the first point of the ball game for the Ramblers' leading scorer. Certainly a bit of a surprise to be held this long without a bucket. 5-16 to play in the second quarter as the second free throw is also good to make it 16-10. to This could be a key turning point of the ballgame. The Chargers had a 16-6 to lead, but now fouling Cunningham at a three-pointer could make for a 5-0 run if Cunningham's able to hit this third free throw. And indeed he does. All three, nothing but net. 16 to 11 the score. Chargers lead cut to just five with 5 10 to play here in the second quarter. Mod Muhammad between the circles to Malik Anderson on the right wing. Aldridge between the circles now, the point guard for the Chargers. Off to Jalen Boyd, left wing. Boyd drives, fakes the shot, now dishes back out Anderson. 
Jafari Brown now between the circles. Brown to Aldridge right wing. Back for Jalen Boyd. Now Brown in the left corner. Brown looking for a screen from Anderson. Can't find much room. Now it's back for Brown left wing. Fakes a three. Off to Ahmad Muhammad. He fakes a three. Now Aldridge right corner three. Can't get it to go. Off back iron. Now Loyola running a bit in transition. Barrett lost the basketball as that hit the end line. Loyola not a team comfortable playing in transition. You can see it right there as Barrett mishandled the basketball. 4.30 to play, second quarter. St. Joe's leads it 16-11. to Muhammad on the right wing to Jalen Boyd, top of the key. Long two-point jumper is there for Jalen Boyd. 18-11 to now. Lead back up to seven for the Chargers with 4.15 to play in the second. Jordan Kwasinski, one of the two twins along with his brother Bennett, on the floor for Loyola. Now Cunningham, the point guard for Barrett on the left wing. Barrett thought about the three, decided against it, dishes back to Mangan. Loyola team that's very patient offensively. Here's Jordan Kwasinski. Kwasinski dribbles to the top of the key. Now he's looking for a pass, and he hands off for Barrett. Barrett to Mangan between the circles. Now Cunningham on the left wing. Cunningham fakes and then drives. Scoops it off the glass and in. And now five points in the second quarter here for Kevin Cunningham. St. Joe's back with the basketball on the five-point lead with 3.30 to play in the second. Jafari Brown in the left corner. Brown backing his way in on Mangan. Now out Ahmad Muhammad fakes the three. Drives mid-range jumper. Nothing but net from Ahmad Muhammad. He has six, and it's 20-13, to 13 Chargers. 3-13 to play in the second quarter. Seven-point lead for St. Joe's. Cunningham on the dish for Russell mid lane. Now it's Mangan. Top of the key. Dribbles back out between the circles, looking for a screen from Russell. Instead, he'll dish off for Connor Barrett. Barrett with the entry pass into Russell. Back out Mangan. Top of the key now. It's Russell. Has it stolen away. Malik Anderson. Up ahead, Jafari Brown. Brown will slow it down for a free throw line jumper. It was halfway down, but rattled out. Rebound to Loyola. 2.40 to play in the second. 2013 Chargers. Russell between the circles now to Kwasinski. It's Mangan here in the right corner. Now Jordan Kwasinski looking for a pass. Was able to dish it back out for Mangan. Mangan on the handoff for Cunningham. Cunningham dribbles around the right side, spins his way, and takes a fallaway jumper. And Kevin Cunningham is heating up, folks. Seven points in the second quarter alone, but Jalen Boyd looking for the response on the other end. Can't get it. Loyola with the rebound, and they trail by just five. Chance for the Ramblers to make it a one-possession game. Here's Jordan Kwasinski on the right wing. Kwasinski to Mangan, who's looking to drive now. Fakes, puts it up, draws the foul. See who they got there. It's called on Malik Anderson. That's his first and the fourth on the Chargers as a team. Two free throws for Pete Mangan. First free throw rattles around the rim and out. Mangan at one for three from the free throw line, and Coach Gene Pingator will call a timeout. 154 to play, 20 to 15 the lead for St. Joe's over Loyola here in the second quarter. And early on for the Chargers, Ahmad Muhammad with six points. Jalen Boyd also has six for the Chargers. Malik Anderson has three as he nailed a three-point jumper back in the first quarter. Jordan Boyd has one, and Jafari Brown has two for Loyola. Kevin Cunningham was held scoreless in the first quarter, but he's put on a show here in the second quarter, bringing Loyola back into this ballgame as he has seven points in this second quarter alone. Barrett also has five points for the Ramblers. Connor Barrett definitely a threat from the outside as he nailed the three to start off the ballgame. But since then, he's been somewhat cold from beyond the arc. It'll be one more free throw here from Mangan coming out of the timeout. And Mangan has three points already on the night for Loyola. Not a lot of fouls here early, just seven combined between these two teams with 154 to play in the first half as that's off front iron. So Mangan 
misses both free throws, and the Chargers get a break there. Five-point lead for St. Joe's with 145 to play as St. Joe's swings it around the three-point arc. Aldridge between the circles to Muhammad, left wing three, got it! Ahmad Muhammad with nine points already and the lead back up to eight for the Chargers. 127 to play, 23-15 St. Joe's. Pemberton on the right wing near half court. Hands off for Jordan Kwasinski. Now Mangan between the circles. Mangan to Bennett Kwasinski. Back for his brother Jordan, now Pemberton. Pemberton trying to drive. Now dishes off for Cunningham. Cunningham in the right corner, dribbles back out. Loyola taking their time here with a minute left of the first half. You wonder if they'll try to hold for the last shot of the second quarter with 53 seconds to play in the second. But no, they take a jumper, rebound is tipped around. Chance Aldridge has it for St. Joe's with 45 seconds left. Tries to dish ahead for Jordan Boyd. It's stolen away now. Pemberton with the jump stop and got it to go on the hesitation. So Quinn Pemberton brings Loyola back within six, 23-17, 30 seconds to play in the half. You would think St. Joe's will hold for the last shot of this half with the six-point lead, and Ahmad Muhammad is dribbling out some seconds at that Charger logo at midcourt. 15 seconds to play in the second quarter, now dwindling down to 10. Jafari Brown with the basketball now with eight. Down to five. Brown trying to cross over dribble. Nearly lost it. Now Aldridge on the left wing. Drives. Baseline jumper is short. The tip is short as well. So at the end of the first half, the score, St. Joe's 23 and Loyola 17. A strong first half for the Chargers as the lead got to as high as 10. But the Ramblers staying in this one mostly due to the play of Kevin Cunningham who had seven points in that first half, but leading all scores for both teams is Ahmad Muhammad, who has nine already for the Chargers. We're going to take a quick break here on Arena Sportsnet, Spreaker.com on Arena Sportsnet. We will be back with you at 7.48 p.m. for the second half here on Spreaker.com.
Welcome back to St. Joseph High School in Westchester, Illinois. The Chargers leading Loyola 23-17 after one half of play. Ahmad Muhammad, the star for the Chargers in that first half, nine points, including a three-pointer. Malik Anderson with three points, made a three of his own. And Jalen Boyd with six for the Chargers. For Loyola, Kevin Cunningham, mentioned earlier, was held scoreless in the first quarter. But in that second quarter, started to pick it up a bit, had seven points in the second quarter alone. The Chargers had that lead up to ten points. It was 16-6. to six. But Loyola able to cut back into that, made it 16-11. to 11. After that, things back and forth pretty even between these two teams the rest of that second quarter. We're just about a minute away from the second half starting, and we'd like to remind you, at this time that tonight's game is brought to you by the St. Joseph High School Basketball Alumni Association and you can help support St. Joseph High School by donating to the Annette Pingator Fund named for Coach Gene Pingator's mother the Annette Pingator Fund provides aid to numerous St. Joseph students also a reminder that the St. Joseph High School Casino Night will be held April 21st here at St. Joseph High School. For more information, contact Kathy Taylor at 708-562-7488 or Taylor at stjohs.org for more information. Always a great event, the casino night here at St. Joe's. Loyola will start with the basketball moving from left to right from my vantage point here and on your computer screen here at St. Joseph High School. Here's Jordan Kwasinski. Now it's Cunningham, the point guard for Mangan. Mangan dribbles around to the left side of the three-point arc. Now Mangan trying to drive, dribbles back out. Back out for Kwasinski. Now it's Barrett on the right wing. Barrett for Cunningham. Barrett at the top of the key. Barrett now flashing in against Jalen Boyd. Back out for Kwasinski. Jordan Kwasinski. Back for Barrett. Now cross-court pass for Jordan Kwasinski. Kwasinski dribbles around at the top of the key, looking for a pass to his brother Bennett. Long possession here for Loyola. Now Mangan will dribble back around to the right side of the three-point arc. Mangan to Jordan Kwasinski. This is a Loyola team. They like to take their time. Almost a minute on this opening possession of the second half. Barrett looking for a pass now on the left side. To Bennett Kwasinski, mid lane, back out to his brother Jordan. Now it's Barrett. Mangan with the basketball on the left side. Now Barrett at the top of the key, guarded by Muhammad. Mangan on the left wing. Chargers imploring from the bench their teammates to continue to play defense. The three-pointer off the mark there from Kwasinski and then nearly saved but thrown out of bounds by Loyola. So the first possession of the second half for the Ramblers lasts over a minute and 20 seconds. The problem for Loyal is that if the Chargers can extend this lead, it will be difficult for this team to come back with the way they play offensively. Muhammad will bring it up the floor for the Chargers. Jafari Brown on the right wing. Brown with the dish down to Jordan Boyd baseline. Back out of Ahmad Muhammad. Long two from the left wing. Can't get it to go. Coming flying in is Jordan Boyd, but he's called for a foul on the rebound attempt. As they'll say, he reached over the back there. It's back to Loyola. 23-17, St. Joe's with a six-point lead with 6.25 to play in the third quarter. Jordan Kwasinski will bring it up the floor for Loyola. Kwasinski at 6'7", a sophomore, along with his brother Bennett. Both of them listed at 6'7", but also listed on the roster as guards. And now the dish down low, wide open is Bennett Kwasinski. So twin brother Picks up the assist to his twin brother, and Coach Gene Pingator will call a timeout as he did not like what he saw defensively on that possession from the Chargers. The lead is cut to just four points. Here was 6.06 to play in the third quarter. As Kwasinski slipped off a screen there and was wide open down the lane, had an easy two points for the Ramblers. And the Chargers cannot allow them to have these long offensive possessions if they want to win this basketball game. Loyola's trying to play it at their pace. Chargers need to find a way to speed up this basketball game, which is a little bit 
contrarian thing, considering usually when you have the lead, you want to slow a game down. But the Chargers are more comfortable, comfortable playing at a fast pace. Loyola wants to play this game at a crawl. Six minutes to play in the third quarter. Chargers with the basketball now. Jafari Brown on the left wing to Muhammad, top of the key. Jordan Boyd, right wing, just inside the three-point arc, was looking for Jafari Brown in the post, and his pass rolls out of bounds. It's back to Loyola. And the Ramblers ramping up that defensive intensity. They've held the Chargers without a bucket so far in this third quarter. Over two minutes gone here in the third quarter. 23-19 the score. Cunningham on the left wing for Loyola. Now Barrett, top of the key beyond the three-point arc. Dishes for Jordan Kwasinski. Kwasinski will dribble back around. Now it's Mangan left wing. Cross-court pass to Jordan Kwasinski. And a foul is called. That's on Jafari Brown. That's his second. And the second on the Chargers as a team with 5.30 to play here in the third quarter. No fouls in this second half on Loyola thus far. So here's Bennett Kwasinski on the handoff for Barrett. Thought about the three, decided against it. Now they dish down Jordan Kwasinski. Kwasinski trying to post up, backing his way in. Now out for Barrett, fakes the three, dribbles a couple of steps away, then takes it, rattles out, but an offensive rebound for the Ramblers. And against a team that holds the basketball as long as Loyola, you cannot afford to give them second chance opportunities. Another extended possession for the Ramblers. Here's Cunningham in the left corner. Guarded by Aldridge looking for a pass. Finally able to dribble away a bit from Aldridge. Now spins his way out to the left wing with the pass to Kwasinski. Now swinging around to the right side with Mangan. 4.45 to play in the third quarter. Chargers still without a point here in the third. Jordan Kwasinski with it. He dribbles around to the right side for Barrett. Now Mangan back for Barrett. Long two-point jumper is short. Another offensive rebound. Two on this possession for the Ramblers. And and the Chargers just cannot get the basketball. Here's Jordan Kwasinski to Barrett. And and now you worry about the Chargers getting frustrated and allowing Loyola to get open here. They have had the basketball for well over a minute, well over two minutes really here on this possession. Kwasinski. Now to Cunningham, wide open underneath is Mangan, and that's exactly what I was talking about. If a team has the basketball for that long, somebody is going to get open, and the Chargers have been held without a bucket for over four minutes here in the third quarter. The lead is just two, 23-21. Jordan Boyd into Jafari Brown, left corner. Now Muhammad dribbles around at the top of the key. Now Jafari Brown backing his way in, fall away, jumper, a much-needed bucket for the Chargers. 25-21, the first two points of the third quarter come after over four and a half minutes without a point for the Chargers here in the third quarter. Lead back up to four. Here's Kwasinski, nearly lost the basketball, now goes back out for Mangan on the left wing. Mangan will dribble back out. Now he's trying to find some space into the corner for Barrett. Thought about the three, decides to dish off for Jordan Kwasinski. Kwasinski now looking for a pass in the post. Gets it back out, Cunningham. Now Barrett, top of the key. He'll reset the offense with three minutes to play in the third. Barrett for Jordan Kwasinski. Now it's Barrett streaking wide open underneath and scoops in the bucket. Again, now back for Barrett on Cunningham right wing guarded by Aldridge. Cunningham looking for a pass. Instead, he'll drive it. Thought about the two-point jumper. Decides against it. Left wing Barrett. Barrett back out Pemberton beyond the three-point line. Now Russell for Barrett. Pemberton left corner. Fakes a three. Drives mid lane. Fakes. Now dishes. Russell. Russell under the basket looking for a pass. Can't find anybody. And then he throws it out of bounds. And that is how you play defense against this Loyola team. Excellent job there by the Chargers after a couple of poor defensive possessions. They defend very well there to get the basketball back. Under two minutes to play in the third quarter. It's 25-23. The Chargers have just two points in this quarter. Jordan Boyd finds his brother Jalen wide open. Off glass, can't get it to go. Rebounds tipped around, and Jalen Boyd has his own rebound. Now back out of Mod Muhammad at the top of the key. Right wing Aldridge finds Jordan Boyd. In the mid lane. Now Jalen Boyd, free throw line, jumper, got the roll. 
And the Charger lead up to four points, 27-23 as a Loyola player fell down. And Tom Livettino wanted to call for an offensive foul. Well, it looks to me like they they may have called something there. But after the shot was made, they, they did indeed call a foul on Jordan Boyd, his second after the bucket, though. So the Chargers still have the four-point lead. 120 to play here in the third quarter. Loyola with the ball. They trail by four. Cunningham, right corner. Barrett, right wing three. Short. Rebound Jordan Boyd. Chargers looking to run with it. Malik Anderson up the right side. Anderson guarded tightly. Dishes for Muhammad between the circles. Now it's Jalen Boyd back to his brother Jordan. Top of the key. Right wing Aldridge. Aldridge back out for Anderson. Now Jalen Boyd left wing. To his brother Jordan, and a foul is called on Loyola. So the Chargers will keep it. First foul on Loyola. As now Bennett Kwasinski will come back on the floor along with his brother Jordan, the 6'7 twin sophomores. They've been held relatively in check, though, just two points between the two of them. Aldridge, the inbound, quickly to Jordan Boyd. Alley-oop attempt, and it was halfway down. Couldn't get it to go, but then tipped out of bounds by Loyola. So St. Joe's will keep it. 53 seconds to play here in the third quarter. 27-23 Chargers. The inbounds from Aldridge to Muhammad. And there was a lot of contact. Nothing called there. Loyola with the rebound. Cunningham pushing the other way on the left side. Tipped away by Aldridge. And then stepping out of bounds as he caught the basketball was John Lynch. It'll go back to the Chargers. So St. Joe's forcing turnovers from Loyola on their last two offensive possessions. 40 seconds left here in the third, and St. Joe's will probably hold for the last shot of this third quarter with the four-point lead. Ahmad Muhammad at half court. Now to Jordan Boyd on the right wing. Boyd, guarded by Kwasinski, tries to drive. Blocking foul. No, they call it. They changed the call. They changed the they initially signaled a blocking foul. It's changed to a charge. I, I, I suppose one of the officials had a better angle there. It'll go back to Loyola, and that's the third foul on Jordan Boyd. So you have Jafari Brown and Jordan Boyd with three fouls for the Chargers. Thus far in the second half, five fouls on St. Joe's, just one on Loyola. 25 seconds to play in the third quarter, a four-point lead for the Chargers. We're going to bring a bit of a full court press now as Ahmad Muhammad will guard the inbounds here from Mangan. Chance Aldridge also on Cunningham and Malik Anderson there on Kwasinski. Mangan into Cunningham in the backcourt. Cunningham at his own free throw line, dishes off for Barrett, and now the Chargers will ease off of that full court press here with 15 seconds to play in the third. Loyola in the front court now with 13 seconds to play. Cunningham on the right side, dribbles back toward midcourt. 10 seconds now, Cunningham on the left side. For Barrett, right side three, can't get it to go. Tip back ahead to Aldridge. Now ahead, Jalen Boyd for the lay-in at the third quarter buzzer to make it 29-23 and give the Chargers a six-point lead going into that fourth quarter. So what a way to end it for the Chargers as the lead stays at six, a very quiet offensive quarter there for St. Joe's and Loyola. They tied 6-6 in the quarter, but the Chargers will carry a six-point lead into the fourth. We're going to take a quick break here on Arena Sportsnet. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. St. Joe's with the lead over Loyola as we head into the fourth quarter. Jalen Boyd with 10 points for the Chargers, including that lay-in to end the third quarter as the Chargers tipped away a rebound and found some room in transition. Loyola did not get back at all to defend, and Jalen Boyd has not had an easy two at the buzzer to give St. Joe's a six-point lead. Chargers will also start with the basketball. 
And this is not where Loyola wants to be, a team that usually takes a minute plus per possession, trailing by six here in the fourth quarter. And it could be more here as St. Joe's starts with the ball. Aldridge brings it over half court. Now for Malik Anderson on the left wing. Top of the key, Jordan Boyd. Boyd looking for a pass to his brother, Jalen. Jalen on the baseline, jumper, short. Rebound to Cunningham for the Ramblers. 7.40 to play, 29-23. St. Joe's with the lead over Loyola in a CCL blue game here in February. Cunningham on the right wing. The point guard for the Ramblers. Had seven points in that second quarter, but was held scoreless in the first and third quarters. Now it's Mangan left wing, top of the key, Barrett. He's a shooter, but he's been cold since that first quarter. Kwasinski now, top of the key between the circles. Hands off for Mangan. Mangan dribbles around the three-point arc for Barrett. Loyola's still taking their ten. They're only trailing by six, so they're not going to change that offensive strategy yet. A team very patient. Cunningham with a long three off the mark. Rebound to Jordan Boyd. Chargers back with the basketball with under seven minutes to play and a six-point lead. Aldridge over the midcourt stripe. Now to Jordan Boyd, right wing, guarded by Kwasinski. Top of the key, Boyd. Now it's Ahmad Muhammad, right wing, back for Malik Anderson. Anderson to Jordan Boyd. Boyd on that left wing. Now for Aldridge. Aldridge between the circles, taking his time with 6.30 to play in this one. And Anderson is fouled on a reach-in by Jordan Kwasinski. That is his first foul, just the second on Loyola as a team. Here was 6.29 to play in the fourth quarter. Five fouls thus far on St. Joe's. Muhammad will bring it over half court for the Chargers. Now it's Aldridge on the left wing. Guarded by Barrett. Aldridge well beyond the three-point arc. Now to Muhammad. Standing at midcourt. He'll set up the offense. To Aldridge. Back for Muhammad. Muhammad. Cunningham guarding him. Now Aldridge just inside the three-point line on the left wing. Now Jordan Boyd in the post using his body. And he is fouled. And then right after that got into the face of Bennett Kwasinski. There is some intensity. There are some emotions running hot between these two teams. And Jordan Boyd is at the line here for two. And Tom Livettino is yelling at the officials here. He is livid right now as Jordan Boyd's at the line for two free throws. And Boyd nails the first. The crowd getting into it as well here. This can happen. A conference game. These two teams have to go up against each other year after year. Second free throw from Boyd. Can't get the roll. The tip in. Jalen Boyd comes flying in on the offensive rebound to give the Chargers a nine-point lead with under six minutes to play. The play of the ball game thus far. Kwasinski. Now it's Mangan. Mangan to Cunningham for three. What a response from Mangan to hit the three or rather Cunningham to hit that three. 32-26, the lead back down to six. A much-needed shot from the point guard for Loyola. He had been cold in that third quarter, but he's up to 10 points for the ballgame now. 32-26, Chargers with a six-point lead with 5.44 to play in this one. A heated moment there between Jordan Boyd and Bennett Kwasinski. And Boyd hit the first free throw, and then his brother Jalen came flying in on the second one that missed short, tipped it up and in to give the Chargers a nine-point lead. But Loyola with a much-needed response from Cunningham hitting the three. So St. Joe will have the ball, 5.44 to play. They lead it by six. They'll inbound from underneath their own basket. Chance Aldridge in the backcourt will bring it over the midcourt stripe for the Chargers with a pass to Jafari Brown on the left side. Aldridge at the midcourt circle looking for a pass. Now dribbles around to the left side into Jordan Boyd. Out to Jafari Brown. Right corner three. Short. Rebound to Cunningham. Cunningham pushing ahead for Barrett. Barrett in transition all the way to the hoop. 
can't get the land to go, but the putback is there from Bennett Kwasinski. And it is a four-point game and an injury timeout there as Kwasinski went to the floor hard. Not sure if I saw contact there, if Kwasinski may have just fallen on his own, but the Charger lead is cut to four, a 5-0 run for Loyola, 5-15 to play. St. Joe's with the ball leading 32-28. The lead was nine just moments ago, but Loyola with some effective offense. Now it's Aldridge with the ball for the Chargers. Aldridge between the circles to Jordan Boyd, right wing. Entry pass to his brother Jalen. Jalen backing in, back out for Muhammad. Muhammad at the top of the key. Nearly lost the basketball, but has it firmly now and resets the offense. Aldridge, left wing. Now left corner, Jalen Boyd. Boyd for Jafari Brown on the left side near midcourt. Brown near the midcourt logo. Now left wing, Jalen Boyd. Jalen Boyd trying to drive, reach in foul called on Pemberton. St. Joe's will inbound from underneath the Loyola basket. That is the first foul on Pemberton. Fourth foul on Loyola. Inbounds, they were looking for Jalen Boyd. It was stolen by Pemberton and then he threw it off the body of Jalen Boyd. Out of bounds, heads up play there by Pemberton. To save it, Loyola takes over with just over four and a half minutes to play in this one. 32-28, the Ramblers down by four with the ball. Cunningham on the right side. Spins back around for Barrett. Barrett to Pemberton. Pemberton on the left side near midcourt. Loyola really swinging around that three-point arc. Now Cunningham dribbles around to the top of the key. Cunningham to Pemberton, now back Cunningham Mangan. Now it's Barrett on the left wing, back for Cunningham right wing. Now Pemberton right wing, back Cunningham, top of the key, three. This one off the mark, rebound to Jafari Brown. Under four minutes to play in the fourth quarter, in the ball game, in regulation. Wouldn't be shocked to see overtime here tonight. As here's Ahmad Muhammad now. Muhammad dribbles around to the top of the key. Jordan Boyd, left side, just inside the three-point arc, looking for Muhammad. Now Jalen Boyd with the basketball, and he'll reset the offense back for Muhammad. Jafari Brown on the right side. Now Jordan Boyd, top of the key, left wing for Muhammad. Three and a half minutes to play. Foul is called off the basketball on Pemberton. That is the second on Quinn Pemberton, the fifth on Loyola as a team. So two more fouls for both teams would put them over the limit. Inbounds pass to Muhammad, dribbling from left to right. Now at the midcourt circle for Boyd on the left wing. Boyd nearly lost the ball for a moment, but regains possession. Now trying to avoid a double team, finds his brother Jalen Boyd in the left corner, guarded tightly by Pemberton. What's the call here? Technical foul is called. Who is this going on? Looks to me like it could be Bennett Kwasinski of Loyola. Kwasinski, is that who is on? Or is it on St. Joe's? Jafari Brown's at the free throw line. Wait a minute. The, The officials, there's a lot of discussion going on here. As I said earlier, tempers were flaring between Kwasinski and Jordan Boyd. Oh, they're giving the technical. They're calling it on St. Joe's on Jordan Boyd. So Loyola will have the two free throws and the ball, and the first one's good from Cunningham. Second free throw from Cunningham also there. Well, if anything, if anything, I I would have thought they would have called technicals on both teams there, but it goes just on the Chargers. It's a two-point game. Loyola has the ball, 32-30 with 3.07 to play. Inbounds into the backcourt with Cunningham. Three minutes left, 32-30. The Chargers with a two-point lead. Loyola with the ball after the technical foul, and they made the two free throws. Here's Mangan on the left side. Mangan. Dribbles back around near the top of the key. Now Mangan on the right side. Hands off for Barrett. 
Barrett beyond the three-point arc, lost the basketball momentarily, regains possession in the backcourt. Now Barrett lost his dribble, he needs to find a pass, gets it to Pemberton on the left side with 2.30 to play. Timeout called by Loyola. It's a two-point lead for St. Joe's with 2.34 to play in what has been a very low-scoring basketball game, but that does not mean it hasn't been thrilling. It, this has been exhilarating. Great defense played by both teams. And in this fourth quarter, you have started to see the tempers flare between these two squads. The technical foul called on Jordan Boyd as Kwasinski was also, for lack of a better term, running his mouth a bit there. And uh, we, we have seen these two teams going at it pretty hard tonight. And you can tell uh, th there's a little bit of bad blood between these two squads. Of course, uh, nothing too out of hand yet, but that technical foul could come back to haunt the Chargers as it gave Loyola the basketball, and Cunningham made both free throws. Cunningham on the night has 12 points to lead all scorers or rather tied with Jalen Boyd, who also has 12. 2.34 to play. The two-point lead for St. Joe's. Loyola will inbound it from the right side in the front court. Pemberton receives the inbounds in the back court, then gives off to the point guard, Cunningham. Now it's Barrett on the left wing. Barrett trying to drive, spins his way back, looking for a pass out. Jalen Boyd applying pressure. Now Pemberton beyond the three-point line. Back for Barrett, left corner. Barrett trying to cross over. Did it go off his foot? It did. Turnover and back to the Chargers. So St. Joe's will take over now. 217 to play. 32 to 30. The Chargers with that two-point lead. Six fouls on St. Joe's, five on Loyola. Aldridge guarded tightly by Barrett. Dishes off for Muhammad and a reach-in foul called. And thankfully there for Muhammad as he lost the basketball, but reason being, he was fouled on the reach-in. So that is the sixth on Loyola, the first on Kevin Cunningham. So on the next foul, the Chargers will have the one and one. Muhammad in for Aldridge in the backcourt. Two minutes to play in a great CCL basketball game. 32-30, reach-in foul. It'll be a one and one for Chance Aldridge. And free throws don't get much more crucial than this. A two-point lead. Chance for Aldridge to make it a two-possession game. But it's just the one and one. So, of course, that front end is really crucial. First free throw. Nothing but net. 33-30. to 158 to play. Second free throw from the senior point guard. Got the roll on that one. Ice in the veins for Chance Aldridge, and he gives the Chargers a four-point lead with under two to play. Cunningham brings it over midcourt for the Ramblers. Cunningham to Kwasinski on the left wing. Now Mangan between the circles. Back for Cunningham on the right side, 140 to play. Cunningham beyond the three-point line looking for a pass for Pemberton. Now dishes back out for Cunningham, nearly stolen away. Out of bounds, last touch by Loyola. The Chargers will have it with 133 to play and a four-point lead. And still discussing things with the officials, Tom Livettino is uh, pretty upset there on the sideline. The Chargers will have the ball. He wanted a foul called off the ball and did not get it. So 133 to play, a four-point lead for St. Joe's in what would be a huge Chicago Catholic League win over a Loyola team that is ranked 19th in the Chicago Sun-Times would be maybe the most impressive one of the season for the chart. Loyola comes in at 21-4. and four. Just a minute and a half left in this one, and at this juncture, if St. Joe's can avoid turnovers and make their free throws, 
Got a good shot here at home. Loyola, not a team that presses. And they won't even bring it out here, even trailing by four with a minute and a half. Aldridge will bring it up on the right side. Now cross-court pass for Muhammad, who's over midcourt on the left side. Now Aldridge guarded tightly near midcourt. Back for Muhammad. Muhammad splits a couple of defenders. Now back for Aldridge. Aldridge fell to the ground but got it to Jalen Boyd. Boyd quickly double team back out Aldridge. Aldridge now facing the same double team. It's stolen away by Cunningham with a minute to play. Cunningham back the other way for the Ramblers. Now for Barrett at the top of the key for Mangan. Under a minute to play. 34-30 Chargers. Mangan dribbling around to the left side. Cunningham long three from the left wing and he nails it. Kevin Cunningham hits a three. He has eight points in the fourth quarter. 34-33. It's a one-point game with 45 seconds to play. Reach in foul on Lynch. So Aldridge goes to the line for the one and one. Oh, what a ball game. 34-33 Chargers with 43 seconds to play as Quinn Pemberton comes back on for Loyola and Lynch heads to the bench. The one and one for Aldridge. Massive front end free throw here for Aldridge. And he sinks it. Once again, nothing but net from Aldridge. 35-33 Chargers. 43 seconds to play. Second free throw from Aldridge. Nothing but net once again. Aldridge four for four from the line. His last two trips to the charity stripe at huge moments. This time the Chargers with just a one point lead. It's now up to three, 36-33 with 43 seconds to play. Loyola will have the ball inbounding from underneath their own basket after the two made free throws by Aldridge. Again, a low-scoring game. People may see this score reported after this one and say that that was an ugly basketball game, but I beg to differ. Really, there's been great defensive basketball played by both of these teams, and the intensity has been tremendous in this basketball game. The pressure defensively in the half court, not something you see often in high school basketball to the extent that it's been tonight. Both of these teams, especially in this fourth quarter, constant, tight defensive pressure. And and that's the reason for the low score. The shooting percentages certainly wouldn't be great to look at, but at the same time, you have to give credit to both of these teams on the defensive end of the floor for the intensity and the hustle that has been shown tonight. Mangan will inbound it for the Ramblers into Cunningham. And Aldridge guarding him in the backcourt. 35 seconds to play in this one. Three-point game, 36-33. Cunningham on the left wing. Don't want Cunningham to shoot a three if you're St. Joe's. 25 seconds. Now Pemberton. Loyola looks to be going for that three-point shot. Mangan trying to find a screen, looking for a pass. And it's stolen away by Jalen Boyd. And a foul is called on Loyola with 19 seconds to play. Jalen Boyd will go to the line for the one-and-one. Again, that front end here, the one-and-one, is that was the ninth foul on Loyola. The front end is key here for Jalen Boyd. First free throw, sinks it. Huge free throw from Jalen Boyd, gives the Chargers... A four-point lead, making it a two-possession game. 19 seconds to play. Second free throw from Jalen Boyd. Right on the money. Five-point lead for the Chargers. 38-33 with 15 seconds left. Pemberton now with it. Pemberton with the handoff to Mangan. Mangan dribbles around the left side. They don't have much time. They've only got 10 seconds now. Pemberton down to five seconds. It's Barrett. The pass out of bounds. Back to St. Joe's. This ball game is essentially over, 38-33 with four seconds left. The inbounds to Jalen Boyd. A jump ball is called as they were they were really reaching in on him, but they call a 
Tie up with one second left. Possession arrow is pointing the way of St. Joe's. So they'll have the inbounds with one second to end the ball game. No, the possession arrow rather is Loyola. It was pointing the wrong way. Inbounds to Mangan who misses at the buzzer. The Chargers win it. 38 to 33, a huge Chicago Catholic League victory. The winning streak is pushed to four. Gene Pingator picks up win number 1,017. What a performance from this team in that fourth quarter. Clutch free throws. The Chargers go six of six from the line in the last two minutes, including the last two free throws by Jalen Boyd to give the Chargers a five-point lead. Jalen Boyd is tonight's player of the game as Boyd in that second half alone. Had eight points in the second half, six in the first half, 14 points for Jalen Boyd, and the Chargers come away with a 38-33 victory over number 19 Loyola. It's a four-game winning streak, perhaps the most impressive win of the season. And this is the time the Chargers need to get going, and they absolutely are. A four-game winning streak. They improve their record to 15-8. and Thank you for joining us here on Spreaker.com. We will be back with you on Friday night from St. Rita for another critical CCL game, and then Saturday night for senior night. Once again, the final score from St. Joseph High School, the Chargers 33 and the Loyola Ramblers or rather the St. Joseph Chargers 38 and the Loyola Ramblers 33.